Hi. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the new Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro FDM 3D printer. And for many years, I've happily been using the Ender 3 V2, but I think this new Pro model has some really nice upgrades that should really improve the 3D printing experience. So let's have a look at some of those features. First of all, we've got a new extruder head. This is a direct drive extruder, which means that the actual stepper motor for feeding the filament material is directly integrated into the head, which should really mean that we're able to get rid of any stringing and that kind of thing that would often happen when we have a long tube between the extruder and the feeder. We've also got a new high temperature head. This allows the nozzle to reach temperatures up to 300 degrees C. So we can print some more of the exotic materials, some of those that wouldn't be possible with some of the other uh, 3D printers. Uh, we've got a Creality Touch sensor for bed leveling. You do some manual leveling at the start and then it can do the automatic leveling to get it absolutely exact. Uh, on this model, we've got the really nice LED light at the top here. So for a bit of illumination, so you can see what's going on, um, this bar at the top here illuminates and illuminates the bed so you can see what's going on. We've also got a sensor up here which detects when the filament is about to run out uh, and gives you the opportunity then to replace the filament, feed it into the extruder and continue with your print uninterrupted. And then one of the really nice things, uh, this user interface on the Ender 3 V2 always tricked me because the layout was so similar to any kind of touchscreen layout. So you end up touching the screen and forgetting that there's actually a knob to control the functionality. Finally, we've got a touchscreen on this particular printer, which should really make the user interface a lot more easy to use. So the new print head not only looks really nice, but it's highly functional. As I said, we've got the CR Touch sensor that's included with this package. You don't have to buy that as an option. We've got the new extruder integrated into this print head here, which is particularly useful for some of the flexible materials like TPU, where we've got the, uh, the extruder and the feeder mounted separately with a tube. The materials can stretch and cause problems with the print quality. This direct drive system with the metal gears should really get rid of any problems there. And then we've got this new heater that allows us to reach temperatures up to 300 degrees C for some of the more exotic materials. We've got the new print bed here. I believe this is mains powered, hence the thick power cable at the back. So very rapid to heat up and it allows us to print up to 220 by 220 millimeters in this direction and 270 millimeters tall. And we also have this removable magnetic plate here, which allows easy removal of the 3D prints. In terms of connectivity, we've got a USB-C connector, which allows direct connection to a PC but we've also got a full size SD card slot. And normally these printers have a micro SD card slot, uh, which can be a little bit fiddly when you regularly transfer data between the 3D printer and your PC. So it's nice to see they've got a full size SD card slot there. It's just that if you're upgrading from an earlier printer, you're probably gonna end up needing to buy another SD card because almost all the 3D printers on the market use those micro SD cards. Although it does have automatic bed leveling, we still have the manual adjustment one wheel in each corner designed to get the system set up as close as possible to completely flat at the start. And then the automatic bed leveling just makes minor corrections over time as things slowly move. In terms of assembly, this is the simplest 3D printer I've assembled by far. This one only took about 10 minutes to get to this stage. We've not leveled the bed yet, but all you have to do is screw the gantry in two screws on each side. Uh, bring the cable round and connect that up into place. The filament holder just clips into place here and you just screw the screen into place. So extremely straightforward. And also a feature that we'll see in another video is you can remove the print head and replace it with a laser for engraving, which is a really nice addition to one of these 3D printers. So on power up, the light bar has turned on and let's have a look what it looks like without the studio lights on. And as you can see, it gives a really nice illumination of the 3D printer. And if you've got a webcam or that kind of thing set up to watch your 3D printing, it means you don't have to mess around with any external lights. It's all integrated and gives it a really nice look. And what we're trying to do here is just adjust it so we can just feel a slight drag on the sheets that they've given us here. And just go through this a few times to make sure it's completely flat. After you've done that, then you can go through to the auto level. 
What you may be able to notice on the sound, possibly not, is just how quiet at the moment this unit is. There's a slight noise as the motors move rapidly, but generally speaking this thing is pretty silent. And because we've got the mains heated bed, we're not using the DC power supply to heat up the bed, which traditionally uses quite a lot of power. So we shouldn't have the power supply fan being quite as active as on some of the other printers. So we've preheated the nozzle, so we feed in the filament. So you push it through this hole here and pull just here to allow it to feed through. We allow a little bit to come out the bottom and then we can start our print. So I've been printing pretty much continuously for about five days now to really give the machine a thorough test, primarily with PLA but also a couple of other materials here. And you can kind of see the order in which I printed in PLA because the spool that I'm using changes colour as we go through it. But the first thing that we printed was the calibration cube here. And this is the very first print immediately after levelling the bed, making no further adjustments. Uh, you can see there's just a little bit of a rough finish at the bottom I made a couple of adjustments just to the layer height and everything like that and the belt tension and then we get much better results all the way up to the top. So really good printing results with basically no fiddling around with the machine. Second thing was the capped just here and again really nice finish on this and you can see the finish that we get on that bed. Now the heated bed works really well. So the entire time it's heated, this had a lot of adhesion to that bed. Then you allow it to cool for about 10 minutes and then you can literally just lift it straight off. So much better experience than some of the other beds that I've used on these 3D printers. This one just seems to release the print really easily. But again, really nice finish on that with basically no adjustments to any of the settings. You can see that's just printed at standard quality 0.2 millimeters and that looks really, really nice. I also printed some power buttons. So these are going to be for the SMD pickup tool project. And the idea is that we've got a tactile switch which attaches to uh, the back of the switch. It's held in place, actually, it's retained. And this will allow us to have some custom buttons on the front of our SMD pickup tool. We've got these little um, sticks here which will go through the PCB just to keep the button aligned. And the idea is that I'll actually print this in clear and fill this recessed area here with some black epoxy. So we'll be able to illuminate the button uh, and we'll see, in this example, we'll see the power illuminated along with the outside, but the rest of the button will be filled with black epoxy so it doesn't show through. And I printed the same thing in three times the size in PETG just to, uh, well, first of all, I've never printed with PETG and actually had no problems whatsoever with the default settings. There's a little bit of stringiness as you can see in here uh, but that clears out quite easily and you can see like the the edges where we actually want a nice finish are really really good. So this was just a test print with PETG at three times the size. Uh, when we come to the video where we do the design I'll try filling this with epoxy first and seeing how that one works but good results there. I also printed it in TPU, um, not quite so good with this one I think because of the method of how I printed it. So the actual print is pretty good but I was printing it this way up and TPU is extremely stringy almost like hot glue when you're using it and basically uh, if you try and print this face down all of these raised areas here just obviously want to hit the bed instead so I think what I'll do is if I go with this flexible material because this is really nice and flexible 
if I go with that material, I'll probably print it in two parts like I have done here. So we'll print it this way up um, and then glue it to another piece that goes behind, possibly from a different material. So we get kind of a nice soft touch on the button. Uh, but yeah, prints looking really good there. Then um, I printed a random Huggy Wuggy off um, Thingiverse, but this wasn't a good model to print. Uh, really, it needs supports in there because he had an arm here, but there's no way that you can print an arm that's just hanging down uh, in free space. And there's no support structures that they had included in this model. So this was never going to print very well. But you can see the finish on the print itself is actually really, really good. Again, just using 0.2mm, very quick to print. But the whole thing looks really, really nice. Uh, then we've got this other model which I found on Thingiverse. This is intended to be a light. Again, a bit more of a complex shape, but generally speaking it printed really nice. And then this is the uh, last two things that I printed. This mini vase. This looks absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice finish on this one. This one took about eight hours to print, but no imperfections or anything. It's this really, really nice printing. And again, a little sonic uh, key ring. Again, good results. So really impressed with the printer. Absolutely no problems. Just a little bit of fiddling around with the TPU, but uh, the PLA pretty much printed without flaws right out the box with just a couple of tweaks. To the belt tension and a couple of the settings in uh, the slicer program. So far I think this has been the easiest and quickest printer to get up and running and it seems to work really well so I'm very impressed with this. I'm going to put links in the description if you're interested in taking a look at this printer on the Creality website uh, but a big thumbs up from me and I'm sure you'll see it in some future videos. So I hope you found the video useful. If you've got any thoughts or comments leave them in the comment section down below and until next time Thanks for watching.